All right, thank you, Madam Chairman. This is uh, and also a traditional use permit by uh, Francisco Mendivar. This is for a church to be located in R6 Zone. Uh, but for this presentation, I'm um, going to start with the mapping of the character area first. On your screen, the map that's also in your packet, established residential is the character area here. You notice that it's adjacent to Community Activity Center, um, and that is an important feature that ties into the history of the property. When you then look at the zoning map, the subject property is zoned R6. Um, as you see, as the neighborhoods north and south, you see highway commercial zoning directly to the east. That is the back side of the Bratz Shopping Center that faces Madison Highway. What's particularly interesting, you see it in the aerial, the subject property is currently developed and was used for many, many years as a meat market. It's a commercial use that actually predates the city's adoption of zoning in 1966. That uh, meat market store as a commercial building <coughs> for a very, very long time. Um, here's some pictures of it. Um, the sad reality is it has been empty for at least 10 years. Um, the applicants, have, I believe, have acquired the property. They would like to convert this over for church use. Um, but in our six zoning, they need a conditional use permit to do that. Because of the character area, it is not eligible for commercial zone, which means the commercial building that's there for future use as commercial, it's sort of called in limbo. Um, institutional uses, such as the church, are allowed in R6 zone with a conditional use permit. Otherwise, this property would be relegated to redevelopment as residential only. So it's sort of an unusual situation, very long, unusual history. Um, my belief is when the city adopted zoning, the commercial versus residential line was drawn here at Lock Laurel Street to keep commercial encroachment out of this neighborhood. Um, when you look around at the neighborhood, most of the buildings are many decades old. There's been very little development or even redevelopment that has been going on here. But I believe that is the pattern. Character area, um, as it first came out in 2006, continued that same policy and philosophy, basically to match the existing zone pattern. Aerial image, you see this is from 15 years ago, 2007. Um, you see the meat market that's there, some cars parked in the lot behind it, there's a little bit of pavement. <coughs> uh, another interesting feature, if you read in closely, the little notch in the eastern side of the property is actually a separate parcel of land. It used to have a single family residence that was demolished many years ago. So it is actually a vacant residential lot. The applicants do not own that lot. Um, I think they perhaps thought they did until the survey was actually prepared. Um, so eventually that may become an acquisition. There may be you know, site plan work to be done. One of the concerns that staff has with the request is you have a survey in your packet. There is no proposed site plan. The applicants are not proposing to do anything except fix up the building and move in. Um, normally, staff would frown upon that, change of use, different development standards, um, at least accommodate enough of site improvements to um, satisfy the use itself. However, in this case, it is a little bit different. Um, subject property, you see the commercial building. This is from the point of the triangle, uh, the side along the street, uh, the rear side. Um, this is the only places where there are existing pavement. Most of the rest of the property looks like this. Vacant area, grassed in, um, a few trees, but no underbrush. Adjacent properties, on one side you have the back side of the shopping center. On the other side, you have an old residential neighborhood. So this property is caught in between that. Um, very difficult to reconcile a transition between those two, other than perhaps an institutional type use. So with this one, staff's thinking process is rather than recommend denial of it because of the conditions of the property and the lack of change, Perhaps since the building has been empty for at least 10 years, um, letting it be occupied by a new owner, uh, work being done on the building itself so it can be used as a church, 
No expansions, no expansions to the parking lot for now until perhaps sometime in the future when the applicants can generate some revenue to actually effectuate a church site on the property. But in the meantime, with certain conditions, to allow use of the building as is, use of the site as is, or a small institutional use. So with that, staff is recommending approval subject to three conditions, and they are as follows. Approval shall be granted for a small church and related church accessory uses which utilize the existing building only. Any new buildings or building expansions will trigger review of the new CUP application. Number two, all parking for the facility shall be off street and on private property at all times. In other words, no on street parking. Number three, all recent construction and renovation work performed on site shall be subject to full commercial plan review and required inspections as applicable. And lastly, number three, conditional use approval shall expire after two years from the date of approval if no certificate of occupancy has been approved by the facility or for the facility by that date. And that would be number four, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> exactly. All right. Questions? Yes. Okay. Would this becoming a church have any impact on the business that's going on in the commercial adjacent? I know there are certain restrictions that cannot take place within X number of feet from a church. Correct. Um, that applies to um, alcohol well, sales. alcohol sales and so on. I believe there actually is an alcohol beverage facility there whose door faces the other direction. And that's a very good question. One, the liquor store is there first. Um, two, I'm not convinced it would be an impact because those measurements are door to door. And it has to come all the way around the commercial building. And that's something staff will look into to see if it renders the liquor store in some type of non-conformity. Well, I think you're right about yeah. that. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think it prevents um, the church going in where there's already a liquor store, but it would prevent a liquor store from going in where there's already a church. Correct. And the issue there <coughs> is if that liquor store moves out, there no will be an issue with a new license coming in. All right. Um, but I think. The distances will be okay, but that's worth double checking. Okay. All right. Any other questions for staff? All right, let's open it up. Is there anyone here wishing to speak on behalf of this request? Yes, ma'am, thank you. I'm Robert Winter, and I speak Spanish, and that's why I know these, these uh, people here who are representing church. <clears throat> the church is a very small one. The group is probably 12, 15, less than 20. They saw an opportunity to go piece of property to meet on the meeting in private homes. And then they they had the money, they raised the money, the price was right. And so the bought the horse, they didn't look at the teeth, they bought the horse. <laughs> So they've got it now. And, uh, but they are very clever and hardworking people. And they do not plan to expand anything with this building with the exception of getting proper electrical done and uh, to make it not a crime magnet, so to get a security system and have video cameras. And that would be a helpful addition to the neighborhood probably help our police department. In addition to that, well, they do have an electrician who promised to do the work and work with them on how to do this. He's a qualified licensed electrician. I am too, but I feel like I'm a little older to get involved in this. In that way, in the physical part, they have a um, Probably going to have some, some kind of air conditioning. You have to have air conditioning because of our brutal summons. 
and we'll have to live up in line for a more. So that will be, I'm not really sure it's going to be working. And that has to be approved for how it's going to be done. It's got to be code. And uh, as it is, anything they did to it, <coughs> even planting some flowers in there, it's so sure it did. It would not be a detriment to the neighborhood. They don't plan to have any outdoor fairs or anything like that. Uh, and uh, the size of the group as it is, I believe that will come. They'll make it a uh, positive place rather than a negative place. They're not planning to even paint it up with garish colors. Or well, say basically like it is. Uh, there will be some windows that are broken and things like that. So at least it will have a, you know, some integrity. And that's all I have to say about it. Thank you, Mr. Winner. We appreciate it. You're welcome. All right. How much time? All right. Pardon? We have a couple of minutes if someone else would like to speak on behalf. My name is Jenny Cohn. My office is at 1804 Plum Street. And I'm an architect here in Dallasta that's helping these folks with their building. We have uh, we've met with the inspections department and gone over a good bit of things. A lot of the building is in bad shape. Uh, they're having to tear down parts of it. The building's been added on numerous, numerous times. And uh, through the advice of the inspections department, when they came and looked, uh, they've torn down, they obtained a demolition permit and they've torn down parts of the building that were just literally falling down. And uh, they're going to have just a small church here and uh, maybe a couple of Sunday school rooms and they've got to add bathrooms and do a good bit of work to the building. It's, it's, it's in pretty bad shape. To be to be uh, they're willing to work and make it into a nice, presentable building. Uh, they'll be taking care of the grounds. Uh, the grounds is kind of growed up now and look kind of rough, but they're going to be taking care of that. And eventually they will do some things to the site uh, with some parking and some things like that. So be okay. glad to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Paul. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone here tonight who wishes to speak against this request? Anyone wishing to speak against this request? All right. If not, I'll turn it back over to the commissioners. Any discussion or questions? Okay, if not, I'll ask for a motion. All right, Commissioner Willis. I want to recommend that we follow the staff's recommendation for approval. With the, what was that? One, two, three, three. Does that mean we got four? We got four. <laughs> so the four conditions is listed below. All right, we have a motion to approve. Second. All right. Second by Mr. Jefferson. All right. Any discussion on that motion? All right. If not, all those in favor of the motion to approve with conditions, please raise your right hand. All those against, and the motion carries unanimously. All right. We are moving on. CU 2022.